So it seems like when most people run out of space in their car for things like camping, they tend to just get a roof box. Now, when I was in this situation, I explored the other options and looked at roof baskets as an alternative. I'm super pleased that I went down that road. And in this video, I'm gonna show you five reasons why I think it's actually the better choice. So with the roof box, the lid itself tends to come right down to the bottom of the load area. And that means you've got to pack your load in the shape of the lid before you close it. And if anything is kind of poking out in any direction, you can't close the lid. So not only are you having to pack your load in the rain, potentially if it's raining, you can't get it very easily inside the full volume of that cargo area. And that for me just strikes me as being a massive hassle to deal with that restraint. Uh, whereas with a roof basket and dry bags, all you're doing is taking your pre-packed dry bags and chucking them on the top. And you can pack those dry bags in the tent or indoors when you're going, whatever, you're not out in the rain when you're packing up your stuff. All you're doing is chucking the already waterproof dry bag on the top. With a roof box, the size of the box is the same irrespective of if you've got cargo in it. So that means it's, it's difficult to store. You're storing the full volume of the thing in your garage. They're very awkward. They haven't got an easy way of holding on to them and they're big and they're quite heavy. So to put them in a garage is quite a hassle. Storage of roof boxes, I think, is one of those things that catches a lot of people out. Whereas with a roof basket, obviously when there's nothing in it, it's much smaller. There's just the low sort of shallow shape of the basket. And of course, you can just grab it by any of the bars. It's very easy to manhandle around and you can hook it on the garage wall or the ceiling quite easily, there's no drama there. And that issue applies even when you're driving it, you know, in terms of aerodynamics, your, your shape of the roof box is the same, even if you're not carrying any load. So if you leave it on the car, you've got the aerodynamic impact, which is exactly the same as if you've got cargo in it. Whereas with the roof basket, when there's nothing in it, it's much lower profile, you've got the aerodynamic advantage when it's empty. So the next thing is that you can just carry way more stuff in the roof basket and dry bags than you can with a roof box. Um, and that's not just because of the inefficiency of the roof box, you know, you end up with a lot of empty space inside it because you have to pack it first. Even if you could use every litre inside that roof box, you still haven't got as much as, you know, three or four of these massive dry bags by volume. They're round, they're cylindrical, they can go up and they go quite a lot higher than the roof box. But of course, you know, you are not limited by the shape of them either. And of course, you can also add big, awkward shaped things to the basket before you even put on the bag something like a big flat square shape for a camping table or something like that chuck it on the basket and put the roof bags on top cinch them down with the straps and you're done total volume is way more on the basket so the company where I bought the basket supplied these straps as a sort of free sample when I bought the basket and they're actually brilliant I really recommend these straps they don't have that brittle aluminium feel like some of these cast ones that you see uh, they're actually just really solid they work really well they grip really really tight you don't have any doubt that they're gonna do their job really and they come in all different sizes and all the rest of it so definitely recommend them uh, when you're using this approach and you need something to strap stuff down so this one is really key, really going on from the last point that the shape and the volume are totally separate with a roof basket, whereas with a roof box, the two are kind of linked. You, you have to work with your shapes so the shapes can fit within that fixed volume. Whereas with bags and a basket, it doesn't matter if there's one piece that happens to stick out slightly higher, it's fine. You can use that, uh, you know, you're not limited by the, the overall shape of the box there. So essentially with a roof box, you're, you're limited by the shape of the things you put in it, even though you might not be anywhere near the full volume capacity. You know, you might have something poking out half an inch and the lid can't close. And, and that just, you know, it's just such an annoying situation to be in. So the final point is that the aerodynamic footprint of an empty basket is much lower than it is when it's full of cargo. Obviously, when it is full of cargo, you do have a little bit more of an inherently less aerodynamic shape. But the point is that's just for those few trips when you're carrying cargo. I think most people's concerns about aerodynamics come from the fact that they want to leave the thing on the roof even when they're not actually using it. And of course, the roof basket is fairly low profile. It's got the little deflector at the front and everything. And it's quite quiet. It isn't, you can't, you know, you can't really hear a lot of drag when you're driving around. And from my tests, actually, the only impact happens over 70 miles an hour. You know, if you're driving at 60 or 65, the, the impact is absolutely minimal. And that was with the bags in. So when you take the bags off and you're left with the lower profile shape, I think you'd be absolutely fine just to leave it on. Much nicer kind of peace of mind to leave something like a basket on the car rather than a roof box. If you leave a roof box on the car, you never know if someone's going to try and crack it open, even though it could be empty. It's the same, it looks the same whether it's empty or full. At least with the basket, it's obvious when you've got cargo in it or not. 
So I hope that's been useful. Uh, it's interesting to look at these alternative ideas sometimes, and it's great when they come in and actually blast the kind of common idea out of the water with with their utility. And that's what this channel is all about, really. It's about sort of pursuing things to, to find out that ultimate format for various things. I've looked at all kinds of things from working with computers and keyboards, and obviously the, the ultimate manifestation of a keyboard is one that you customize just for yourself. That's a really interesting journey that I've gone down. Check out the channel for that. Uh, and of course, all kinds of other areas of, of cars and workflows around that. Uh, so subscribe for more of that kind of thing. If you do follow that keyboard journey along and you find yourself wanting to build one of these keyboards for yourself um, using the custom PCB design and all the rest of it, I'd really recommend PCB Way, who are actually sponsoring this video. Uh, so if you go to their website, you can actually choose some of my existing PCB designs, click order, you get that board through the post, and then you can follow my other videos to learn about how you put your own keys on and how you design your own key map. And these keyboards really just work. They just behave like normal Bluetooth keyboards. You can use them with your, your computer or your phone or your tablet, whatever. That's a fantastic approach. So special thanks to PC Boy for sponsoring this video, but I actually do really recommend the service they provide there too. And don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.